First of all, uh, how many of you have heard again the term emerging markets? Uh, have you heard it before, guys? Just type a yes or a no if you haven't heard about the word emerging markets before. It's not a bad thing to say no, we are here to learn and we are here to explain some things to you. So please type in the chat room if you have heard before the term emerging markets. Good morning, Alan, and welcome. So, how many of you have heard before the word emerging markets? Francis says yes, okay. What about others? What about Anne-Marie? What about Oscar? What about Mary? What about Jeff? Guys, have you heard again the word emerging markets? Uh, okay, Francis, since you have heard emerging markets, not that much. Mary says not that much. Francis says yes. Uh, I will. I will explain shortly. So, uh, Francis, since you have here, Anne Marie says no. Great to have your uh, participation, guys. So, Francis, since you have heard the word emerging markets, and it doesn't matter at all if you are wrong in your answer, when you, when you hear the word emerging market, what is the first thing that is coming to your mind? Emerging markets. <laughs> Money. So what is the first thing that is coming to your big movements? For me, guys, when I hear emerging markets, it's not developing countries. Developing is something between developing and developed. Uh, they are no longer using the word developing or third world countries in economics. So it's somewhere in between developing and developed. And in this group, we have uh, a great number of countries, like we have, for example, the BRICS. What do I mean by BRICS? I mean Brazil, Russia, India, China. We have also Eastern Europe and Turkey. Okay, when I say Eastern Europe, I mean Romania, Bulgaria, Greece. Cyprus is not included because it's a very small economy. Uh, Eastern Europe, guys, the Balkans, basically, and Greece. And then we have Bangladesh, Egypt, Indonesia, Iran, Mexico, Nigeria, Pakistan. So the, the so-called civets, Colombia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Egypt, Turkey, and South Africa. So there are a number of countries that are included in this group. Now, the important thing about these countries is that they share one thing in common and that one thing in common is usually either the inflation rate or the growth rate so in terms in, in times of prosperity in the markets emerging markets tend to show bigger profits than the developed economies now as i said today the Turkish inflation rate was announced at 24%. I'm watching now the chart that has data about inflation rate of Turkey since 1970. And as I said, one of the major principles of technical analysis is that history repeats itself. Back in 1970s, the inflation rate of, the, of Turkey was even below zero called deflation. Deflation refers to the economic term where the actual prices of basic goods, instead of increasing, they are decreasing. So when we have deflation, we mean decreasing prices on basic goods and necessities. In economics, we use three words. We have the inflation, where prices are increasing. We have the deflation, where prices are decreasing. And we have the so-called deceflation. Disinflation, it means that the prices are increasing, but at a very slow rate. And also, we have the word stagflation, where everything is stacked. Nothing is increasing, nothing is decreasing. Now, from 2008 towards 2017, we, we have been in a disinflation phase. Disinflation, it means that 
the inflation was very low and the prices of basic goods were not increasing at a satisfactory rate. Hence, that's why the central banks are fighting yet to get a 2% inflation rate target. Now, what we observe here on the chart, back in 1970s, the inflation of Turkey was almost at zero, went up to 140, and then around 2005 came back close to zero. And the important thing is that it was steady for a number of years. Now, technically, what I see here, what I see here, this is called a saucer, a rounding bottom, or a saucer pattern. Rounding bottoms usually are visible only on weekly and monthly charts. They come after a prolonged downside movement, and they usually last for years or months, months or years. So, but as soon as they break to the upside, there is no way coming back. What I'm trying to say here, this is a rounding bottom observed on the chart of the inflation rate of Turkey, and the price has just broke above today the 20% inflation rate. So, personally for me, during the next one, two, three years, we will see an inflation rate of Turkey going up. And I think unless something dramatic changes, I think the first target will be 80. So if we look it at a much smaller scale, we see that the price was in a trading range. It has broken above in the trading range. And I think we are getting towards an 80 percent inflation rate. Now, when that will happen, it will happen very, very shortly. And when I say very shortly, maximum up to three years. Because when these patterns are breaking to the upside, the upside movement is very steep and very violent. So as a first target, I would say we will get to 40, most probably by mid-2019, end of 2019. We will see about that. And I think and up to 2020, 2022, the inflation rate will get to 80% at least. Now, why am I saying that? Because I said that if we have an upside break of these patterns, things are going very fast and very steep. If we have a closer look on the five-year chart, I think the 10-year chart is more representative. It was in a trading range, no worries, but for the past few months, we see a clear upside break for Turkey. Now, what is interesting, however, is how if I compare this chart with two other European Union countries, and this is Poland and Hungary. Look now what is interesting about that. Poland inflation rate. And we are talking about two countries within the European Union which have not yet adopted the euro currency. So the currency for Poland is Polish Sloty. Now, there are, simil there are a few similarities. The blue, the blue line is the Turkey inflation rate, and you see that is 25%. As you can see, however, the rate of increase of inflation rate of Poland is also going up. So what does this mean for me? It means that Polish economy is getting into trouble, especially if it breaks 2017's high. And I think it's getting there because what is this formation, guys? This is formation for me is more like a bullish flag. So expect the inflation rate of Poland to double at least the next one, two years. So that's another for me, the emerging market of the European Union, Poland basically, is not looking good. So what does this mean? Short the slot T. So euro slot T, dollar slot T, we are shorting the slot T. So fundamentally it shows that the slot T will get much weaker. Now another pair, another country that is very interesting, also within the EU, is Hungary. And look at the rate of Hungary. The rate of Hungary is even much worse than Poland. I mean, Poland is somewhere here, but Hungary has, you see this bullish flag, has broken the flag to the upside and is getting higher. So Poland is marginally within Maastricht criteria. 
Maastricht criteria say 3% inflation rate. For the moment, I think it's, get, it's around there, but it's getting very dangerously above that. Now, what is really interesting now, let's go to a country outside the European Union, South Africa. And what is the currency of South Africa, guys? Is the South African rand. Now, another emerging market, another emerging market, which if we, if we look on the one-year chart or the five-year chart, we see great instability in inflation rate. But the interesting thing is that for the last six months, again, it is showing an increasing percentage of inflation rate. So in other words, we have two countries within the EU. We have Turkey, South Africa, and also some other countries of the emerging markets, which are indicating a worrying increase of their inflation rates. So for me, the great investment opportunities in terms of currency pairs for the next two, three years are the following. Shorting the Turkey Lira, shorting the Hoof, shorting the Polish Lotti, and shorting the South African Rand from a long-term perspective. Okay. Now, if we see the currency pair of US dollar against Czar, you will see that indeed the past three months together with inflation rate, the rate has increased from 11.7 to 15, to 15. So they are following their inflation rates. If we see dollar Hungarian foreign, you see exactly the same increase as well. So we see a synchronization of the inflation rates and the pairs. If we also trade slot T, let me find Polish slot T, US dollar Polish slot T. Again, you see that from January 2018, everything is following an upside momentum. Now, uh, the question, Mary is asking me if I will trade these pairs. The answer is no, because these pairs has a, have a very high spread and they are definitely not good for intraday trading purposes, which is mainly the, the purpose of the trading room. So if, however, guys, you have your own personal accounts and you wish at your own risk based on what we have said, to play some small trades on these pairs, but you should always be careful with your money management and risk management. Here, I'm just analyzing what I believe it will happen. I'm not telling you now, go and go all in on Hoof or on Turkish. Okay, so be careful on that. I'm just analyzing. So we are getting closer to a financial crisis. The emerging markets are not doing well. They are indicating a very worrying, increasing signs of inflation and Two countries are within the EU, but they have their own currencies, Hungarian foreign and the Polish Lotti. The other two countries that are following these two countries slowly, closely, Turkish, Turkey and South African run. So this is as far as the inflation analysis is concerned about emerging markets, guys.